Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. I've got a washing machine motor, an oscilloscope, and a basic washing machine motor or universal motor speed controller, which is basically a dimmer switch. And I just want to put this on the oscilloscope and see what it's doing. I'm gonna dim the lights somewhat so we can get a better view of the trace on the screen, although you can see it up here at the top. So let's have a look first at what's coming into the speed controller in the off or low position. So turn it right down. Because we're dealing with mains voltage, I'm running this through a 220 volt to 220 volt isolation transformer. Got my probe here. Let's put it onto the neutral. And there's the wave we're getting. Doesn't want to stay put, but that's the wave we're getting for 240 volts. Uh, sine wave. So if I put this over here onto the output, and bring up the power. It's a completely different waveform. That's it off. So that's really what it looks like in the off position. Once the motor stops rotating, it'll cut out again. And you saw that when it's at full power, it goes up to this really, really fuzzy sine wave, but of the same order as the input sine wave, just really, really fuzzy. There must be an awful lot of interference on it. So that was this controller. This one's based on a BTA-16 Triac. Let's plug that out. So this time I've got it on a Variac, again running through an isolation transformer, uh, straight to the motor this time, nothing in between. And I've got it set to, I've got the earth clamp here on the neutral. Uh, this is it with zero volts. So bring it up to 20. You can see the waveform starting to appear. 40, the motor just about starts turning. 50, 60, the motor's turning. So I think I've got it set up a bit better this time. I've got the probe on the live and the earth or the ground clamp on the neutral as it comes out of the voltage controller or the voltage regulator here. And without electrocuting myself, I'll try and manage this. So the voltage is rising here on a sine wave. It's chopped down horizontal, and then it jumps up again and drops down, then it's chopped up and then horizontal again. Now the, the position holding isn't great on this oscilloscope, but let's bring it up and you can see this line rising. See this line rising and the flat line getting shorter.
Yeah, so there's the start, the ramp up of the sine wave, then it drops down to nothing. So basically we're looking at the horizontal length of the horizontal line and how long that gets. The length of that horizontal line is how this little triac in here is chopping up the signal. It comes on and off every half cycle and how long it stays on for, how long it stays latched for, depends on the resistance in the potentiometer and the capacitor in there. Beyond that, I'm out of my depth, but I thought it would be fun to look at it on my oscilloscope before I put all my toys away. <laughs> Questions or comments? Leave them below. If I've done something completely wrong, tell me about it in the comments. If you don't understand why I'm going through the isolation transformer when I'm working with the oscilloscope, have a look at John Ward's video. Just search for John Ward isolation transformer and it'll explain it far better than I can. Suffice it to say, that I understand that I should do it. And that's about as uh, enlightened as I am on this thing. Thanks for watching. See you later.